everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be working on a couple of little doodads which I found up in Ballarat. This Phillips, just zoom back. It's a RB291 from, I believe, 1971. But wait, there's more. This 291 from 1971. Or maybe a little bit later. Because it has the Phillips badge there and this arrangement around the dial and stuff. It's probably, yeah, this one isn't quite as useful because it's missing its carry handle. They're pretty filthy dirty as usual, given the shop I buy these at. The infamous junk shop near Ballarat Station. So we'll take the back off. Looks like someone's already done something with this. like an injection molding mark or something there which they've hidden with the AC 240 volt 13859 I think the sticker was yep 111914 so this is definitely newer I could tell just by the color scheme on it. This one out the way for a moment. Oh, by the way, I'm doing this transistor set, or these transistor sets, because the dim bulb decided to finally completely die. Not quite sure why this got so hot and melted, but it shorted out and um, it blew, blew the fuses. So given they don't sell them, I have some ferrite cores and some wire. And I'm hopefully, going to be able to count up the num oh, I don't, uh, maybe, um, count the number of windings on this, which is going to be practically impossible, I think. So I don't know whether um, I can get one of these online like this, but I wouldn't know the Henry's on it. Hmm, oops, sorry. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. This definitely needs some retro writing. This would have been quite a nice colour when it was new.
the nut has come off of this which holds the power transformer I can't see the nut Uh, so maybe this is what was rattling. It's a little bit of plastic. And this circuit board is not clipped in properly. Worry about that in a moment. Okay. So I have my trusty power supply here. It's set to nine volts at 0.5 amps or 500 milliamps. Okay. Assume red is positive. made a click when I turned the power supply on. We're examining the apartment. Exactly right. And um, you know, there's around a quarter of a million Jews um, in Ukraine. The Israelis have, you know, made clear that, that is one of their primary concerns about their welfare in the current crisis. I mean, they've said. What are you? The Western Festival of Racing is coming to a tragedy. to resist this at every turn. That doesn't mean that talking about peace. Hmm. That sounds very good. If I hear one more thing about Shane Warne, I will throw something hard at something. Okay. was 18 minutes of the 7 o'clock news last night. Three minutes of news, then sport, then weather. Okay. That's enough of that rant. Okay. Let's try the other one. Interesting, they use different caps. Basically, it's the same radio. Now, the tuning capacitor is wide open on these. There's no, there's no cap over these, over the outer, like on the Japanese sets. So the dielectric is pretty filthy in there on this one, 
whereas it's reasonably clean on this one. Okay. Okay, let's try this one then. So it's plugged in. This one doesn't sound anywhere near as good. Rightio. Well, they both work. So the first thing might be to try is cleaning this out in here. Yes, another, oh, yep, another piece of plastic has just fallen out of this radio. I wouldn't have a clue where. Tuning is way off on this one. Because that's SBS, and that's usually right down um, at where KZ used to be. So that's almost an eighth of a turn, and that is as far as the tuning goes. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is replace these capacitors if I've got the right values, which I probably have. This is all sealed up inside the can, so I don't know whether there's any... Looks like a trans... or oh, something or others in there. Okay. So I'll be back. So th this is the power supply and pretty simple one at that. It just has the power input, the transformer, going to a through a couple of filter capacitors, then two diodes and this resistor here. 
But I've had to take this off to get this little board out over here. So this looks like it just unclips. Yep. Now, can I get this up enough to turn it over? Yep. Should be able to work on that. 220 at 10 volts. That's a 330. 330 and probably a 220. So replace these four capacitors. I might undo this one here as well, this orange wire. Give me a bit more wriggle room. So I've replaced these ones, but the one microfarad one down here is actually 63 volts, which is unusual. And I don't have any of those at 63 volts. And it looks doesn't look like it's a 6.3 without the decimal point, because it's exactly the same on the other one. This and the 330 microfarad ones at the back. I've only got these expensive Elna ones for proper hi-fi use. That's all academic because the speaker is really, really scratchy. So that's what's making the distortion. So I don't know quite what to do with these. This one works perfectly and it doesn't have a scratchy speaker. This one seems to work perfectly but has the scratchy speaker. So what I'm going to do is try and oh. so what I'm going to do is try and get this back into alignment. Um, no, I can put this back. I think we can still buy this type of triangular uh, plug, but I'm not sure. So I'll have to investigate that further. If not, I'll put in a standard IEC modern plug if that'll fit. It's going to be pretty. Uh, Might be fairly tight. I'm just looking at this filter capacitor over here. I know this one will be good because these are always good except when they crack or blow out, like on David Tipton's recent video. This looks like an unusual Yes, 250 microfarads And the plus is in the middle So I don't know whether it's a I suppose I'll have to look on the circuit diagram, won't I? Okay, let's work on the tuning capacitor. I'll just put this back. It 
It doesn't look like anyone's played with the tuning capacitors in there, or the coils, I should say. But I can't tell with the orange paint on them is the alignment or just a check mark. Now I don't have any non-conductive screwdrivers that'll fit in there. So these are really tiny. So this one will have to do. Still not convinced about this. Actually what I'll do is I'll squirt the volume control out. I'll just use this contact cleaner. Um. Turn the power supply off. It's beginning to feel a bit better. So even though these are sealed, well, the case is sealed on them, dust does get in. As you can see around here and on this one over here, power's on. 10, one line, open at $2, three shimmer bolts at dollar 90, fourth in eight, feel the rhythm. Right, it's at the very top of the dial. So I don't know whether... Now I know this isn't the right way to do this. With the metal screwdriver, but... isn't turning at all. Hmm. Well that tuning slug seems to be well and truly mashed up. I can't actually turn it anymore. It seems to be a very soft plastic or something. This is Radio National, so I'm going the wrong way. This doesn't seem to be moving anywhere. I don't think it'll be actually on the tuning coil itself. Because this is sealed up. It's got tape over it. Although... That's magic. Let's hope I don't get a copyright thing on that. possible 
a maximum of 23 for you. Showers in Canberra, where you'll reach a top of 25 degrees. Well, the sensitivity is way better. It's still way out. Well, that is totally loose. We're slowly coming down. Okay. Well, I'm giving up on this one until I can get some more 330s. That slug on this one is level with the top of the can. This has had a couple of um, resistors replaced too. Or, or maybe not. But these are the older type resistors in this one and the newer type are in this one. With these um, Elner caps. So I don't know whether they were running everything down or getting what they could or what have you I don't know I'll see if I've got another replacement speaker for this but I think all the ones I have are oval and they're larger the the new old stock ones I bought you know I bought bo um, both of them uh, so I could fix one and this is the one. Well, after a lot of fiddling around, I managed to get the um, 1377, or actually it's 1278, isn't it? Mm, it's even worse. Um, Magic's on 1278, and it's now sitting on about 1400. And it's beginning to sound a little bit better. With the speakers still scratchy a little bit, but I cleaned, uh, took it out and cleaned it. And it doesn't seem to be scratchy on the travel, but yeah, definitely doesn't sound as good as the other one. So we'll turn that one off. Try this one again, just for comparison. Hopefully the same song is on. Yep, this one definitely sounds much better. Right. We'll disconnect this. And we also have this little radiola. This is from about 1969. It didn't have its leatherette case, but I just bought this as an experiment. For best performance, we recommend Everready battery number 2362. Well, I bet you can't get these anymore. Yes, this is the, when they started to work out they could be really cheap with them. This is much the same plastic as some other little transistors from Hong Kong, which I have. In fact, this may even have been made overseas, I would say. So that's a Japanese tuning capacitor. Uh, it's got AWA stamped transistors in it. Don't know whether you better see that or not. This little one's in there.
has C T O C range of capacitors, 100 uh, microfarads, 10 volts, interesting they're not radials, let's see if this works, 9 volt again, all these transistor radios from the 60s were 9 volts. It's working. Take this off. Well, it sounds like a transistor radio from this period. Move this around. It's certainly selective, but it's not for us um, other way around, Andrew. Uh, it's certainly sensitive, but it's not very selective. Yes, there's a lot of um, interference around here. But, it seems to be working okay. So it probably needs those six capacitors changed. And be back to its brand new performance. Model B67. Interesting speaker magnet, really long. Okay, well I'm going to wrap this video up. And we've had success with this one some success with the other one and this one just works straight off the bat well actually that one did too but you never know until you have a go as we used to say at school okay so i'll put this together and release it in a couple of weeks so look after yourselves and we're back next week with another exciting video. Not that this was very exciting, but you get the drift. Okay, bye.